welcome to the final video for the art workshop. In this video, we're going to be talking about composition. So when I'm talking about composition for uh, beginning and intermediate students, I like to think about composition as the artful arrangement of objects on the piece of paper so that the viewer's attention stays on the piece of paper and doesn't drift off the paper. Okay. And so as we're talking about this, I wanted to give you an example of a composition that's really not so good. So what's happening in here is that the apple is cut off by the edge of the paper, the bottle is cut off by the edge of the paper, and then everything is scrunched up in the corner. And because the lines, because the objects uh, are cut off by the edge of the paper, the lines are also leading off the paper. And this takes the viewer's attention away from, um, away from the objects themselves and makes their eyes just drift off the paper. So if we're do, to do this correctly, we would want all the objects more or less in the center, kind of like this composition right over there. And there are two ways of ensuring that this happens. The first way is to create uh, this kind of shape. So how you create this shape is create two L's with your hands like this, turn one of the shapes towards you, put the other hand right on top, and then hold your hands out like this. This will give you the general shape of the still life that you created, which will be extremely helpful when you're trying to transfer that to the drawing. And the second uh, and the more exact way of doing it is to actually measure the proportions of the still life in front of you before you actually put them on uh, the drawing, uh, on, on the piece of paper. So I'll give you an example of how to do that. So when I was painting this, uh, this painting, I measured top of this teapot to the bottom of the composition right over here and I measured how many times that measurement fit into this side of the lemon to that side of the cup and once I knew that it was a lot easier for me to place that on the canvas without having the lemon come off the paper and the tea cup come off the paper so just measuring the general shape of the still life is extremely helpful so here is an example of composition at a slightly higher level so this is a painting I created a couple months ago, and I'll walk you through the thought process of working on this composition. So in this composition, I used color and shapes in order to uh, create a piece that I thought was aesthetically pleasing, but also helped to tell a story. So I used warm, bright colors for the focal points of the composition, and I used lines to draw the eye to those focal points and keep the eye in the canvas and not just going off the edges of the canvas. So in this painting, I uh, use the reddish color in the book and the lines of the book to draw the eye towards the hand and then this L shape in the arm to draw, draw the eye to the face. And this circular shape is really helpful in keeping the painting as a whole. I also used uh, similar colors in the coat and the outdoors uh, to help connect the two sides of the painting. Uh, if I didn't do that, if this were a bright summer day, it might look like the canvas is divided into two. So having very similar colors kind of brings the two sides of the canvas together. It also helps tell the story that I was trying to get across, which is a color, kind of melancholy mood um, of an older man at the, in the winter of his life and the winter outdoors. And so trying to connect the outdoors with the man's life at this point. Um, so this is just an example of um, all the things that you can do with composition later on. You can tell a story. You can create a composition where your eye just wants to stay on the canvas. Um, so yeah, things to think about later on. Well, you have a great rest of your day, and thank you so much for watching all these videos. Goodbye. <music>